Hello. It's a disgrace. Previous to this DVD, I've actually made three videos uh, about the wines of Spain, my passion for the wines of Spain. In it, I've talked about various different wines, but not one of them yet from the place where I'm actually making the recordings, from Alicante province. D.O. Denominación de Origen, Alicante, makes some wonderful wines. And I thought it was about time, really, that I started talking about some of those wines, and what better place to start than with, with Bodegas Enrique Mendoza. Because it was Bodegas Enrique Mendoza that really opened up the door to, for other Bodegas to start making wine of quality, and also started to show that wines from this area can be as good as many others in the rest of Spain, many of them far more famous areas. Critics of a generation before myself would have always said that wines from Alicante, well, they're not going to be much good. The reason for that is it's too hot, and they're right, on the coasts it's really hot. It's too humid uh, during the growing season here as well. Well, they're right, of course. If you're making wines, there's only a certain type of wine, maybe some of the dessert wines that you get here, uh, only a certain type of wine that you can make in those areas. But Alicante is a huge province. There are lots of space in Alicante, and if you go inland from the coasts, you can easily get up to 600 metres, 700 metres, approaching 800 metres above sea level. Now, this, of course, is vastly different vastly different because the climate has changed. Yes, it's hot, but at night it's cold. And we do need that big difference in daytime and nighttime temperatures to make sure that we've got quality wines. Well, also, of course, the soils are different. Where I am on the coast, it's sandy soils, but inland, no, no, we've got all manner of different types of soils. And it was Enrique Mendoza who decided that he would capture all this and try and make some quality wines. It was quite funny, in fact, because lots of his neighbours at the time were wondering what on earth he was doing, uh, chopping off bunches of grapes and making sure that the yield per vine was less than what they were normally used to and what they thought was best. But no, as most of us know, the uh, a, a wine which is old, perhaps, uh, a wine which produces a few bunches of grapes, is going to produce less wine, but it's going to be richer for it. Now, Bodegas Enrique Mendoza makes a whole um, level, a whole range of different wines, and I've tasted many, many of them. I was lucky enough to receive a group of them recently, which I've really enjoyed tasting, and I've just picked one, not necessarily because I think it's the best one, but I wanted to start talking about uh, Enrique Mendoza wines, and obviously I think that there's a good chance I'll be talking about more on another video in the future. This is one of a particular range of, um, of wines, uh, and it's a, a monovarietal. In other words, it's made with just one variety. The variety you can perhaps see there is Petit Verdot. Did you like the accent there? Petit Verdot. It's actually um, one of the grape varieties, a black grape variety from the Bordeaux originally area, from the Bordeaux area. Uh, but in actual fact, it's a very late ripening um, grape variety. Now, that's a problem in Bordeaux, because late ripening means that you're not going to get it fully ripe until later on in the season, perhaps into, well, probably, in fact, into October, towards the end of October. And then, of course, in the northern hemisphere, and particularly at those latitudes, you're likely to get some bad weather as well. So harvesting uh, can be a problem, and sometimes, therefore, um, the grapes were picked perhaps a little bit too early uh, before they'd fully matured, and so the resulting wine was a, was a little bit green, a little bit harsh. Of course, I'm talking here about Spain, which of course is further south, there's plenty more sunshine here, and particularly in Denominación de Origen Alicante. We get plenty of sunshine, so there's plenty of time for the grapes to ripen perfectly and for them to be harvested before there's any danger of any foul weather. And that's clearly what has happened with this particular one. This is the 2012 Air Petit Verdot from Bodegas Enrique Mendoza, and I think it's a delightful wine. <coughs> It's got a really dark colour in the glass, I'll show you in a minute. Really dark colour in the glass, and there are some wonderful uh, dark berry aromas, forest fruits aromas, I would say. Um, not so much of the light fruits, but we're not bothered about that at the moment. We want something dark and juicy. But it's also had um, added to that fruit, if you like, an element, a greater depth of flavour, because it's been aged for 15 months in oak. 
Ten of those months in American oak, and five of those months in, in the more subtle French oak. And that's added some flavours to the wine, but they are not in any way competing with the fruit, <clears throat> rather they are complementing it. So we get a greater depth of flavour and we get a greater depth of pleasure too. It's a long lasting wine, it's got a medium to long length, that means that when you've actually tasted the wine you can still taste it even long after you've actually swallowed it. Now let's have a look at it. You can see it there. I should really be holding it against a white background like I did in a recent video. Instead, I've got my shirt on here. But anyway, I think you'll hopefully be able to see it. Perhaps if I put it uh, towards the actual... You can't really see it that well anyway. Don't worry about it. Take it from me. It's a super wise. Quite intense in its colour. And it's quite intense in the mouth as well. On the nose... Well... The, the oak is there, but it's integrated. We're talking here about fruit. It's the fruit which is the primary aroma that you can get. And maybe there's a touch of leather, a touch, a tiny touch of coconut in there as well, a bit of vanilla, but mostly we're talking about the fruit. Now, let's put it on the palate. And when I put it on the palate, I'm going to hold it there for a short time as well. And the reason for that is because your mouth warms up the wine. And that lets uh, extra flavour and certainly extra aroma release itself uh, up to the back of the nose and through to the brain, which decides what we're actually tasting and do we like it or not. Full. Full-bodied, rich. Not a touch at all of harshness about this wine. It's one for easy drinking, polite drinking, there is some complexity to it, uh, complexity to it, and I've said before that it's got some depth of flavour. So you can drink this wine just to enjoy it, but you can also drink it with food as well. Clearly, it's going to go with meat dishes. It's had 15 months in oak, so it's got a bit of body, and it needs a dish to go alongside it, which has got a bit of body as well. Um, we actually tasted it the other night, uh, so unfortunately there's not much left of it now, but uh, we tasted it the other night and we did that with a casserole, uh, a meat casserole, uh, actually made with some of the red wine in here as well, which really was a rich, lovely, rich dinner, and this was a lovely, rich wine to complement it. Can I suggest, therefore, that when you are next looking for wines to buy, look at the whole range of wines from Bodegas Enrique Mendoza di O Alicante. This one, priced at round about 10, 12, 13 euros, something like that. Well worth the money. And it's also, it's 2012, so it's going to be a wine that can be drunk now, but it's going to be enjoyed for at least another 18 months, two years, at its top level. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. Bodegas Enrique Mendoza, Denominación de Origen, Alicante.